Well, hello everybody, it's BugEater64 here, and today we're going to be doing a flight in X-Plane 11. Going to be flying the latest updated Nimbus Huey helicopter. This is going to be version 1.52, I believe. Um, just recently came out an update, and I'm going to give it a shot. And we're going to fly from KFUL, Fullerton Municipal Airport, Fullerton, California my old stomping grounds i i pretty much grew up there in that area and uh, we're going to fly from there out to catalina uh ka vx is the identifier and we're just going to fly out there so i can kind of show you what uh mr x's scenery looks like and it's available on uh, explain.org and we're going to take a look at that um Mr. X does some absolutely beautiful scenery of airports and surrounding areas. I've also got a San Francisco area and the surrounding area with Golden Gate and Oakland Bay Bridge and all that stuff. But today we're going to fly out to Catalina Island just to let you see what it looks like in X-Plane 11 using some orthos and Mr. X. And I've got orthos of Southern California. So with that, we're going to get in the cockpit and we're going to get things started. I sure hope you enjoy the flight and welcome aboard. All right, so here we are in the helicopter and we are ready to go. Uh, getting ready to lift off here uh, from Fullerton Airport and head for Catalina. Now I've run into some problems in that, um, well, let's get in the air here and I'll definitely end up showing it to you. Uh, the Nimbus is a great little helicopter. It's come a long way um, and does a fine job. It can be at times uh, a bit testy at flying. And uh, I found the reason for this is the uh, trim system. Uh, this is a little bit different than I'm used to in flying helicopters with force trim or uh, and you almost have to use uh, the force trim in this helicopter uh, in the Nimbus bird uh, because where the trim is set if it's at neutral when this helicopter takes off it wants to go straight backwards onto its tail so that can be a bit of a problem um, so we're going to have some fun here. We're going to play around with it a little bit, see if I can figure it out. Uh, this is uh, Nimbus uh, version uh, 1.52, and this is the first flight. So I've had to re reconfigure my controls with the new bird, and we're going to see how things go. This could get very interesting and wild and woolly. As we fly over Southern California, heading out to Catalina Island. Now this doesn't have an autopilot per se, and whoa! Yeah, look at that. Okay, don't know why it reacted that way. I'll have to figure it out, but it did. But anyway, when you're flying this, if you get it trimmed properly and you get it heading at an altitude and a direction and you tell the co-pilot to take over, he'll keep flying it that way. And then you can make incre incremental changes. You can tell it how much of a left bank to hold, how much of a... Uh, right bank to hold and so on so um, you know and that's why I'm playing with it right now I'm trying to figure out how's that gonna work here so it's a bit of a bear but we'll we'll work on it and we'll get it get it going here And 
And when you're flying along, if you've got it trimmed and so on, and you hit the trim release, it basically, you know, neutralizes all the trim. This aircraft becomes a huge handful. So we'll keep working with that. But it's not a bad day to be flying. Uh, we got some scattered clouds. Do have some turbulence, some wind, but nothing we can't handle. But when I neutralize the trim, as you can see, in some cases I have to go. Whoa! Here we go. Hello. Yep. Watch the RPMs on those blades. And whoa, that's something I've never done before. We just did a barrel roll in the Huey. <laughs> it wasn't planned, I promise. <laughs> and we didn't kill the bird yet. But we're going to find... She's a bit of a bunkin bronco right now. Anyway, my cyclic is full pitch forward trying to get the nose down. So, and we're working with the trim the whole time. Trying to find the sweet spot. <laughs> what a wild ride that was. All right, come on. Let's see if we can get this thing. Trimmed properly. Once I get used to it, I'll be able to do this probably from, you know, even before I take off. Be able to set the trim and go. Um, right now, still trying to feel things out. Luckily, we didn't break the aircraft. Otherwise, that would have made for a short flight. So we'll keep working on it. We we'll make little increment changes to the trim and get her where we want her. The other thing I have realized is I am going to have to work on the setting up some curves for this particular helicopter when it comes to my collector. Uh, it's a little too sensitive right now. So and that makes it a little bit hard to keep her centered and you know get her trimmed up and then keep her uh, in level flight. That's what this flight was about, to test out the new version of the helicopter and also just to have some fun. And so far it's been a lot of fun. Wow. But this is uh, X-Plane 11, 0.53, and these are orthos that I built of Southern California so uh, yeah looks pretty good I think And with the Avatab in the right, you can see the where we are at and our major interstates as we uh, keep working on flying along. Shortly here, I'm going to be making a, a right turn, right bank, to start heading out towards Catalina. And 
right now we are not headed towards it. And our track is about uh, one, well, almost, well, two miles to our right. The uh, Garmin 530 was a nice addition to the helicopter, so at least we can set a flight plan. And it doesn't have an autopilot, so it won't follow the flight plan, but it gives us at least a direction and shows us our heading and what we should be flying on. Okay, I've got control of the helicopter. So we'll start banking and heading towards Catalina Island. Now Catalina Island, the scenery that we're going to see there is the scenery made by Mr. X. And uh, he's a, done a beautiful job. I've seen pictures. I've, I've been to Catalina many times during my life and uh, love it there. Beautiful place. Great place to sail to and, and get buffalo burgers. But, um, yeah, Mr. X has done a beautiful job on his rendering of the Catalina Island Airport. Very nice. So, we're going to fly out there and land at it and just take a quick look. fighting the, the collective a little bit to, to keep her to level or to yeah, keep her in a level flight. Seems like I just touch it a hair and it either wants to climb five to eight hundred feet or it wants to dive five hundred to a thousand feet. So um, again I think that's I'm going to have to fine-tune some of my control curves. And uh, once we get that done, it should be much easier to maintain control. Uh, the aircraft itself is performing most excellently. Pilot have it for a little bit. And I can concentrate on just keeping it level. Another beautiful day in Southern California.
And everything's looking good here. We got plenty of fuel. All indicators are good. Torque, gas pressures, fuel pressure, all looking good. We're doing about just over 100 knots. And just almost 1,000 feet, not quite. Once we get to the island, we're going to have to gain some altitude because the, the airport itself is over 2,000 feet. I think it's like 2,200 feet above sea level. So Get in there. We are almost feet wet. And if you heard that, that was my co-pilot falling out of the helicopter. is now in free fall down to the ground. It's not a pretty picture. Ah, it's a shame. I knew, knew the co-pilot well. This is a sad thing. But not the problem. We'll just carry on. It's a shame. She'd waited about two minutes later. She'd have landed in the ocean instead of hitting that pavement. But, you know, I, I, I can only say that it was probably because of my flying earlier when we were doing barrel rolls in a Huey helicopter, which you're not supposed to do. Just couldn't take it anymore and stepped out. Let us have a moment of silence. That's long enough. Okay, now let's get back to flying this helicopter. Hmm, got a new co-pilot. Looks a lot like the old co-pilot. Oh well. Welcome. Damn. As it stands, we are now feet wet. It's water from now on. And we are flying our track pretty well. So, excellent. Okay, so with that, enjoy the ride and we'll see you when we get closer to the island.
All right, well, welcome back as we approach the airport. You see it's sitting right on top of the hills uh, on the island. So we're going to come in from runway 22, which is almost straight ahead of us. And then we're going to fly over to the airport and we'll make a circle around and come back. Give you a quick little view of the airport and then come in for a landing. Put our avatar away here, and as we fly over the main parking area, then there's some more parking spaces on the uh, runway zero, runway four end on both the left and the right, as you can see there. Now I've added the control surfaces window. The green is the trim location of both the uh, cyclic and the anti-torque pedals or rudder pedals. So you can see that the anti-torque pedals are to the left where they would normally be for, for takeoff and that the green or cyclic trim is way forward and just slightly left. The red markers, and you'll see them moving about, those are the actual positions for the anti-torque and the cyclic. And you can see them moving around. Um, and you can see how much right pedal I've got in for the anti-torque at this point. So, you know, that gives you an indication of kind of where I was and the problems I was having trying to set up the trim for the, the Nimbus. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting the hang of it. Things are getting much better. So we're slowing down. We're going to lose some altitude, of course because that's always a good thing when you want to land. And we're going to come across the runway here uh, when we turn around. And you'll see it here. As you come in. Now I could, I could land here. This is one of the, the parking areas. Uh, there isn't a true designated helicopter landing pad. But that's not an issue. I got plenty of places I could land safely. But I want to be near the uh, airport pavilion. And that's where you see those trees in the circle there. Uh, that's the main office. And, uh, you know, where you put your flight plans and stuff like that. 
off to the right in the back we might catch it you can get a glimpse of the uh, one of the original hangars that actually says Catalina Island on the top front so we're gonna come in we're gonna land here Let's see if I can do it nicely nice and easy and touchdown and it's butter we always like butter so we're down safely I just went ahead and neutralized the trim so everything's back to original location and we're gonna shut this aircraft down and call it a day so throttle down the minimums of course we get the that orange light that you see that's the low rpm warning okay fuel off okay force trim off let's go turn our lights off and nope wrong one click spots are still a little bit touchy at times in the nimbus but much better than they were when this thing first released Okay, starter generator, uh, inverters, and battery. And she'll just slowly rotate down to a stop. So, we got here safe. Got through the wild and woolies. <laughs> But once we got the trim set up and kind of figured it out a little bit, uh, much easier, much better. Like I said, we'll make a few adjustments on my control settings. But other than that, she's a fun helicopter to fly. So, no complaints. That was fun. So, with that, let's move on. All right, well, flight completed. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Got a, Hopefully you got a good look at Catalina uh, as far as where the airport is and what Mr. X has done to it. Um, I'm. This is my first flight in the Nimbus updated version. So I'm having some, it's, its trim system is not the same as in other Hueys I've flown. So uh, I'm still getting used to that. And you got to see something that I did that I have never done in a Huey, in any other simulation, or in the real world. And that's basically a barrel roll. So, uh, hey, you do what you got to do, but we saved it. And you could tell that I was having some real issues trying to get the uh, trim set up. Uh, and then you could tell when I was doing the trim and of course i was pretty much being rather vocal but uh and when i tried to turn it over to the co-pilot so this aircraft does not have an autopilot but one of the things they've added uh, along with the uh, garmin 530 which was a really nice thing to add because i can set up my heading and i can actually kind of follow uh, the purple that way and follow my flight plan. But that being said, the, the co-pilot, once you get it level and where you want to fly it and, and you've got it on the heading, if you turn it over to the co-pilot, he'll fly it and keep it pretty, keep it steady. But that being said, once I take back control everything's you know it's all in my hands and it sometimes is just you've got to get used to how the quirks are with this helicopter but she's great fun to fly um and she's these improvements have been wonderful so and with that what can i say successful flight everything went 
almost according to plan, but we got to Catalina safely. So until next time, thanks for coming along. And until we see you again in the skies, no matter which sim it is, whether it's X-Plane, Microsoft Flight Simulator, or DCS, or even Arma 3 now, um, look forward to it. And as always, remember, safe flying.